Hot Springs Village Inside Out is a closer look at the greatness of Hot Springs Village, Arkansas and the surrounding areas, people, places, experiences. Hot Springs Village is one of the most beautiful places on earth. Join me, Randy Cantrell, and my co-host Dennis Simpson as we engage in weekly conversations to explore Hot Springs Village Inside Out. Today's show is brought to you by Central Arkansas's favorite radio station, KVRE. Find them on the dial at 92.9 FM. Stream them live at kvre.com. Remax of Hot Springs Village. The award-winning Remax of Hot Springs Village is the largest real estate office inside the village with over 30 full-time agents and support staff. Visit them to learn more about this beautiful place to solve your real estate needs. Call them today at 1-800-364-9007. Find them online at explorehsv.com. They are Remax of Hot Springs Village at 1-800-364-9007 or online at explorehsv.com. Ike Eisenhower State Farm. Ike and his award-winning team have been serving the insurance needs of folks all around Hot Springs Village since 1998. Ike has qualified for State Farm's President's Club, Chairman's Circle, and Hot Springs Village Insurance Agent of the Year. Call Ike Eisenhower State Farm today at 501-984-4100. That's 501-984-4100. Find them online at IkeEisenhower.net. Call them today for all your insurance needs because, like a good neighbor, Ike Eisenhower State Farm is there. Back again with Mr. Sean. Sean, it seems as if you do something more than just a, a uh, home expo. You, you do something else in life, right? That's correct. That's correct. So uh, for nearly for 30 to 35 years now, I've been actually in the advertising industry uh, started in Little Rock at, you know, a shop called Cranford Johnson Robinson Woods. Everybody's heard of that CGRW. Started there. I went to a smaller shop called Creative Advantage, which is no longer around. It was bought years ago by Chris Allison and then I think acquired by Stone Ward. Uh, so uh, those are the shops I've been involved in. And then in 97, I started my own shop called Your Ad Team. And so for we're about uh, to hit our 25th anniversary, I believe. Um, and with your ad team. So it's it's kind of hard to believe for me too. I didn't realize I was that old, but uh, for 25 years, man, I've been doing my own shop and, and we do full service advertising, everything from brand development, logo development, uh, all kinds of graphic design work, uh, website development, any kind of marketing you can imagine we can we can handle for you so so uh, I, I i had a friend one time in the ad agency business who told me he said don't tell my mom i'm in the ad agency business she thinks i play the piano at a house of ill repute man, so yeah. <laughs> it's something like that right right oh yeah absolutely. absolutely well how did you how did you even get into and, and number one where you grew up where and, and how did you get into the ad game at all so uh i grew up here in bryant actually close by <laughs> Close by the way, Bryant, Arkansas is where I went all 12 years of, of, of school. Uh, I went to a small school in in northeast Arkansas for the for one year. Uh, I picked psychology as my major, which everybody does if they don't really have anything. They think they you know can figure out people. So they pick psychology or whatever to, to be their major. I did uh, love uh, how figuring out how people tick. Um my very first semester at that very small school, there was literally one paragraph in my psychology book. It was entitled Consumer Psychology, one paragraph that long, Consumer Psychology. And it talked about how, why people buy what they buy. Man, that absolutely piqued my interest. I'm like, you know, I don't really want to get literally get in people's heads. But I want to know why they buy what they buy. That is so that just rang true to me from immediately. And so uh, over the next few years, I, I focused on advertising and marketing as my major in my study. And uh, I, and I knew immediately that I wanted to be in the advertising agency marketing you know agency game. And so that's really where what sparked uh, the very first spark of that for me came from. 
Well, uh, let me catch back later, here. We are. Yeah. 25 here. Yeah. It's amazing how time passes. And Sean, I think you're like me. I look on Facebook and see all the people I went to school with and those old people concern me. Don't they? You, <laughs> they do, man. People like you with no hair. I mean, I, don't I mean, know what's going on with that, man. I don't know. I, Hey, you no, no, yours is a choice, right? Yours yeah, yeah, choice. man. I, I shake mine off just because, you know, whatever. <laughs> As we Bryant graduates to say, say, you know, last year I, I, I was not a Bryant graduate, but today I are one. So I are one. <laughs> I are one. And yeah. no, I, but I understand the, the scenario. It, it We were actually, Diane and I were at, uh, oh, what's the Jack Daniels Distillery. And oh, the yeah. guy, the guy who was giving the tour, had two two doctorates in psychology, <laughs> and wow. and he we we had a whole line of different little samplers lined up, and he said, "Well, taste these and tell me which one you think's best." He said, "I would tell you, but I can tell you which one I would imply." And he said, "I can tell you which one you would like." Right. And I right. was like, "How could you?" Oh, psychology. Psychology, sure. Well, this sure. one's okay, but it may that one, you know, you're a unique person. Right. You're a unique person, yeah. Sean. That one may appeal to you. Yeah. 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 Sure, man. And, and that's that's all it's all about psychology, man. Absolutely. I mean, we're influenced daily by images and and obviously by a lot of social media stuff, but you know, we're influenced constantly as due to social media, we're influenced constantly about what other, why other people are choosing so why should we choose that or you know images and and ideas and people talking referrals referrals is is an amazing type of of uh, psychological uh buying um you know stimulus so uh so obviously all of those things added up together uh are part of a part of the buying process i mean if you trust somebody and you say hey you you should use this person to replace your roof, then, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to trust that person because I trust you. And so that's that again, it's, but it's still all about psychology. It's, it's about what makes you buy, you know, what you buy. Well, I can hear a lot of our listeners say, well, yeah, that referral, I, you know, I talked to Susie and she said the home guy, you know, that, uh, uh Rick's roof would be good or whatever, da, 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 da. What they don't realize is that when they scroll through, uh, Facebook or, 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 or uh, any online media, they're going to get stars. Those are, yes. that's just a referral. That's a different system of referrals, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, Google reviews, all those things, all those things, uh, you know, add into our, our influence of, of what we buy, when we buy it, you know, branding, branding is a huge thing. Uh, I, I'm a huge, I'm, I'm, <clears throat> I, I, I guess I probably tag myself this, but I call myself the brand police because I'm so, I'm so anal about if we, if we develop a logo for a company, I'm, I'm extremely careful. And, and I get mad if, if a, a newspaper or, or, or a print publication, you know, stretches it or compresses it or doesn't display the logo like it's supposed to be displayed. And of course, you've been in print some too in your life, so you understand how all that works. But and, and some people might not even care. But I'm 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 a, an advocate for my clients and how their brands are displayed and viewed online or in print. And so it's it's extremely important to have that. I mean, you'll never see the Nike logo, you know, squished up no. or pulled up. No, no. <laughs> if you did, they would they would come unglued and you would probably not ever be able to carry their products again. <laughs> Absolutely. We, we did a lot of work. And, you know, I always understood you know, you've heard that you've gotten this phone call. I know you have. The newspaper said, well, you know, we marked that PMS 485 in one, instead of 185 because it's a red and that's a close enough red. But you, yeah, and no. you're like coming off the walls no. like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah, not cool. I, I had that imprinted in my head when I was in printing with uh, Best Printing, and we were doing the work for Store Riverside Cable became Store Cable became Comcast Cable. Okay. <clears throat> and Store Cable had PMS 185, PMS 185, okay. 186, um, and a 40%, uh, it was solid black with a 40%, 133 line screen minimum, could be 150 <laughs> or above. Right. And and I, I walked in one day, and they were like, hey, Dennis, we got something for you. They said you needed this, and I'm like, 
Okay, what? And they had a beautiful, beautiful eight by ten, solid red reverse, solid red reverse. White had the logo behind it. Da 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 da. And I opened it up, and it was every curve and surf and every edge of the store logo the way it had to be, the exact font, the exact right. percentages, the exact everything. And I was right. like, "Thank you." Right, right, <laughs> right. Oh yeah, yeah. To to somebody who wants to pursue those standards, it's great. To somebody who right. doesn't, you're like. Eh, whatever close yeah. enough <laughs> right man it's it, but it, it really is important no matter what kind of business you're in uh you know it, it is important to portray that logo exactly the same every time yeah it's called that's why it's called branding because if you if you have literally have a brand for a, a cow yeah you're never once you put that brand on that cow, it's never distorted. It's never going to change. It's going to stay consistent. Well, <laughs> it's and, a really you know, weird, word, weird example. But whatever. no, no, no. It's a great example. It's it's the, it's the etymology of it. It's it's the original yeah. beginnings. Yeah. Uh, I will make note. One of my favorite stories is is the uh, Doughboys coming back from World War One. Their mama yeah. had cooked for them their entire time. They got shipped out of the South and across the United States to World War I, where it was truly horrific, the first industrial war. Mm -hmm. When they came back home, they didn't automatically come back home, but they would go, not all of them were literate at all. And they would go into the stores and go, well, I, I just want some soup. Right. And, and one clever manufacturer had a white label with a red brand and a gold seal. <laughs> sure. And and even illiterate doughboy from down south could go that soup. Now I may not like minestrone, but it's right. still soup, and I can figure right. out what it is. So sure. you know the the idea of a logo actually came from, I guess, illiteracy. But the branding wanted to be so hard on it, right? Right. Oh, absolutely, man, absolutely. And you know, I just you know, I just I love the branding concept of of companies of businesses. Um, you know, we we have. Uh, we have a lot of a lot of new clients come to us or in even some older clients who are like, hey, it's time to rebrand. I mean, I, I'm working on one right now um, and it's 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 an older uh, the, the company is probably from the 1980s, mm -hmm. started in the 80s and uh, their logo got really weird over the years. And there's I'm not going to even tell you what the the son of the company calls parts of that logo, but has something to do with the female body parts and they're like, we're tired. Okay. I, well, I can say ovaries. It's not a big deal. Yeah, sure. It sure, looks sure. like ovaries. And, and they're like, I'm really tired of that particular uh, thing in our logo. So I've changed it now. I've changed it to delete that, but I kept sort of the logo, but now we're, we're about to go through a rebranding process that is going to take that away, you know, altogether. And so they're, they'll be way happier with it. And it's a generational business. So, I mean, you know, it's, it, you've got to be careful because you have, you know, uh, the 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 parents or the dad who started the business, the son who's taken the business over, and so it's still it still needs to be consistent, but it's got to be, you know, you, you still have to be sensitive with it. You still have to be appreciate the history of what the dad started, and yeah. and that's is super important when you go through a rebranding process of of any company or any business, especially one that's generational. Yeah, well, and you have to carry that legacy down. You know, sure, I had heard absolutely. that the fine folks at Safeway, this is back in the late 70s, early 80s. If you'll recall, they had a very round S logo that looked very 60s and 70s. And they yeah. decided to transition that to more of a you know rectangular with soft edges kind of thing. And they wanted to make it look a little more modern. And yeah. so they showed people the new logo in, in studies and everybody went, that's not Safeway. Right. <laughs> because it was too great of a change. You know, yes, you got to drop absolutely. the ovaries, but you can't make it not look like the original <laughs> did, right? <laughs> right, so, exactly. And and in that instance, over a three year period, they went through through six different logos, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they slowly transitioned them every year or Into every few months. Yeah. They would transition to a different logo, which right. was absolutely genius. But let, let's let's go back to one other thing I wanted to talk about real quick. I, I see that we're working with the 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 home expo that you're doing, and you've chosen green and black for the logos. Is that <laughs> let's see that would be uh that would be emblematic of what we want to convey convey right it absolutely is it absolutely is so uh you know that that color is it's just it's just a really great color combination i like the like okay so for our ad agency it's red and black mm -hmm. and so I, I really like the color black with any 
dominant color. So like the green really uh, stood out. And, and and it's funny, we were talking about the transition. So when we first started this company, when we start first started BizBuzz Events, um, it was a, it was, uh, it was a home and garden show is what we build it as. Really? And so, yes. And then, uh, so over the years, we've changed it about three times now and I'm stuck now. I'm done just for the record. I'm done because the name of the expo is super important. It's a home improvement expo. Right. And so, uh, that's what we're, that's what we've landed on because that's what we specialize in is home improvement products and services. And so it used to be home and garden. We had a little bit of garden, not much. It's really hard to get garden people to dissipate in a show that's in the winter time or, or spring. You know, it's, it's just, it's just tough to get that, that in there. Uh, and, and we just didn't have a lot of participation, which is fine. No, no big deal. Uh, but we quickly realized, we quickly realized that we do, uh, uh, specialize in the home improvement industry so that's the reason why and it, it, last year was actually our first year for that particular logo uh the home improvement expo logo that's we did last year was our first year for that um so you know, again so we, we were doing uh so we have we had we now have four shows so we were doing uh home and go, home show bryant i mean benton home show hot springs village home show conway home show cabot and instead of doing home show with these 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 other names involved, what I wanted to do again branding was to come up with our home improvement expo brand, and now all we do is change the name above that logo. So we have that one logo for all of our shows. We just change the name of the city above it. So if you think branding's important, let me tell you about Daryl Walter back in the eighties with Tide. He drove the Tide number seventeen NASCAR. Mm -hmm. And he said at one time in one year, the fine folks at Tide, Procter & Gamble, had calculated the amount of time. Now, he was winning and leading a lot at that time. Yeah. But they sent, they they took the number of seconds that he, his logo and that logo was on screen. And they found out how many seconds it was on screen over the year through NASCAR. And that one endorsement, which was like $10 million back in the 80s. Sure was 700 and uh, 710 million dollars worth of advertising they could not have afforded it to save their soul right. but it's on the side of the car every time you see the lead car come by yep. right oh yeah and you know that's like uh, the most attended sport in the entire world right yeah i believe or yeah, or yeah no you're sport. right you're right well the, the most watched sport most in the world watched and or attended yeah, yeah. Oh, attended okay. attended is the is the highest one. Formula yeah. One is the most watched. Okay. And okay. and the number one car this last year had a huge FTX logo on the front of it that they yeah. took off after it went bankrupt. So apparently there's some yeah. <laughs> so right. you, apparently you got to do that, right? You got to take okay. the logo off yeah. after they go bankrupt and get filed, and yeah. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, I, I would. I'd probably <laughs> be embarrassed about that one, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me, are there, is there any other things in the works coming in this, this, this home expo is a great idea. So uh, we are looking to expand um, our reach. Uh, so, you know, uh, and, and I'm just going to go ahead and jump out there and say this, you know, the, the Little Rock home show is, is great uh, for the Little Rock area. And huge. Yeah. It, it's a big, it's a big deal. So whenever we open the Benton event <clears throat> center here in Benton, um, you know what, let me tie a couple things together. Sure. I went to business in 1997 and actually I believe it was our second, our very second uh, client was actually the Celine home builders association right here in Benton. Okay. Right. Right. Uh, so they hired us to, uh, to promote their home, uh, their home show, which was at the time where Pulaski tech is now it used to be the expo center. I'm sure you remember that it used to be an outlet mall. Then no. it, it that went gone, the, and that the, went to the funny part of that is, is that your your husband, the Saline County Home Builders, ask you yeah. to put on an event in right. Pulaski County because I we do, don't have I a know. building in Saline County. I'm, I'm just bringing that up. We didn't have anything anything here to do. So yeah, uh, so I, I they were our client for a couple of years, and then after a couple of years, the um, the it turned into Pulaski Tech bought it and turned it into what what it is now. 
So now we have zero places to do a home show in Benton. When, it, when we built the Benton Event Center, I immediately was in contact with, with, uh, with the Benton Event Center staff and said, hey, I want, it, I want the home show for, for this building. And they're like, great. So March, uh, the, the fir this first weekend in March of 2013 was our very first show. So this will be our 10th show or 10th anniversary show uh, this year. But uh, so it's kind of neat, um, you know, putting these two together because we uh, I absolutely love promoting the Celine Home uh, Builders show. And then when we lost, uh, you know, we lost somewhere to anywhere to have it. We lost, obviously lost the client. So um, I always said and, and I almost did it a few times at the Boys and Girls Club. I'm like, man, I'd love to have another show here in Benton, but there's nowhere to have it. And I almost did it a couple of times at the at the Boys and Girls Club here because they have two gyms. I'm thinking, man, if I could just put some vendors in there, but I just I just never did. And then whenever we, like I said, when we built the Benton Event Center, this is perfect, perfect opportunity for us to actually own the show, start a new business, you know, bring in more revenue for the city and and help our local economy grow. And so we took over it immediately and and just took off. And then we did that show for four or five years. And then we added, uh, we've added uh, shows over the years. We've added the Conway show, the Cabot show. Last year was the first year for the Cabot show. Um, and then two years ago was the first year for the Hot Springs Village show. So we added shows over the years and moving forward, uh, we're looking at a couple of more, a couple of different cities. It'll still kind of stay in the central Arkansas area. Um, I just think that local people like to have local stuff, just like you guys do in the village, just like that show. I just feel like that's kind of our niche and that's kind of, it's, it's just worked out great for us and great for the communities that we're helping with these shows. Well, you know, the, the village is, uh, it, you can't say the village and say too many more sentences until you say the word eclectic. Absolutely, uh, It is a different, unique place. It has different, unique people. And, and I love it. I love it for that reason. Yeah. Uh, the radio station is a classic example of eclectic here in the next uh, few minutes, uh, next hour or so. Scotty Mac's going to be on the radio and he will be doing request songs. Tell me where else in the United States you can call and they'll actually play your song <laughs> on the radio. I, remind yeah. me, Scott. I, Sean, I'll wait a minute. Let, yeah, no, I, I can't think of it. No, no, no. <laughs> and and the reason I say that is because we we want eclectic and unique. I remembered, and this is to my failing, I remembered thinking when they were building the Expo Center, I said, oh, who is ever going to have a place in their Benton needs an Expo Center? Really? Well, I tell you what, <laughs> between you and Carrie Murphy, what, is there a gun <laughs> knife show ever, every other month? What is that Seems with like that it. deal, Carrie? Come on. Yes. Right. <laughs> and, and by the way, there's no accounting for people that were in my Sunday school class just because he was in my Sunday school class for, right. I don't know, close to a decade. I, I think he flunked my Sunday school class a couple of times. I had to come back. <laughs> but, and you know, I love Carrie. You know, I'm joking. Oh, yeah. But the, oh, yeah. the gun and knife expo, that thing is packed. I mean, packed. Yep. Uh, and, and well, so is the, the Coronado center when you come here. And so is the, the, the center when you're there. Right. right. Uh, go tell me once again, what's the name of your ad agency, just in case somebody wanted to talk to somebody there. Uh, your ad team is the name of our ad agency. It's your, -A -T, ad your ad team. Yeah. yeah. We, we go by yeah for short. That's on my license plate. That's our logo is the yeah logo, but it's your ad team. Uh, it's your ad team.com. Uh, so, I mean, anything, you know, if you have a business that needs to be promoted, if you have a branding that needs to be redone or, or done, uh, any kind of, we do, you know, uh, we do uh, traditional and digital media. So, you know, I don't want, because we have Facebook, because we have Google ads, because we have all that stuff, that's great. Digital is great. There's still a very important place in marketing for traditional marketing, which is direct mail, which obviously you guys will get a postcard from us promoting the the home show there in the village. Uh, and, and a lot of people won't e wouldn't even hear about our home show, our home improvement show, if it wasn't for that direct mail piece. Uh, because all everybody in the village does, I mean, most of them listen to radio, all of them, not necessarily, uh, you know, you all don't, you know, it's, it's not a Facebook, it's, it is a Facebook, a good community for Facebook, because of the the eclectic and, and the eclectic places 
that the villagers are from. Uh, Facebook is great because of that, because they can stay in touch with their families in a different state, different city. Uh, so we do some advertising on Facebook, not a lot, but um, so anyway, the, the traditional part of, of marketing is still extremely important uh, when it comes to promoting your business. And so uh, some people want to put all their eggs in one digital basket, and that's not necessarily the right thing to do, but we can help guide you through that process. Do you know Greg McMahon at, uh, at uh, Commercial Mailing? Uh, I know commercial mailing. I know Greg. But okay. yes, I know, Greg I know. and I have worked together for over 45 years. He's a okay. great, great, great guy. Uh, <clears throat> the reason I say that is because, you know, just recently this week, postage went up again. I know. And it ain't cheap. And I know, no. I know you well enough to know if it didn't work, you wouldn't be using it. But the bottom right. line is postage works. People read yeah. their mail in the village. They read yeah. their mail every yeah. day. And, but once again, those waters, you got to have somebody to help navigate those waters, right? Absolutely. You know, and it's not only about just doing the mail. It's like having the right message when you do the direct mail. Yeah. That's exactly why we do the buy one, get one free, get into the, the show is because, hey, I can, this is a great, this is a $5 expense for me and my spouse or me and my friend. And we can go have a good time at the Home Improvement Expo, pick up some some freebie stuff on the tables or or even you know help solve a problem at our house so i mean it's it, it's all about the message not only is it about having a direct mail piece in your mailbox it is about the message we also put i ask all of our sponsors for a for a a, uh, a coupon or or a special deal um that we actually include on that direct mail piece so each one of our sponsors has uh like a coupon or something on on the the postcard to tell you what you can, you know, what you can get when you come into the, to the, uh, to the expo with their particular company. Well, it's a great idea. And gee, I mean, who else but a marketing company could do this so well, truly. <laughs> you know, Congratulations, it, it, my friend. Well, I appreciate it, man. It's such a great fit between our ad agency and, and the, and the expo, you know, home expo uh, shows. It's just, it's just a perfect, a perfect mix, you know, really for, I'm, I'm my own client. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and as somebody, and I know, you know, this too, as somebody who you know, I've spent 13 years in printing, did a lot of ad work. Uh, and by the way, I don't know if you remember in high school, I had a Christian band and there was this guy named Darren Gray. Do you know that guy? Of course. Of yeah. Course. I think he would be president and CEO of, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, 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 CRD. Of right? Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Great guy. Great guy. I tell you what, oh, yeah. great reminiscing, great catching up, Sean. Thanks for joining us today. And I tell you what, we will see you next time. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Dennis. Thanks, Sean. Bye. Thanks for watching and listening to Hot Springs Village Inside Out, a weekly podcast starring Hot Springs Village, Arkansas. Visit the website at hotspringsvillageinsideout.com.